All right, eighth grade. So we, uh, on request, I'm going to make some videos that go along with the Waggle assignments. Treat it like notes. They're going to be short and sweet. Take your notes, upload them to the Google Classroom. That way, you keep those notes grades. Those are nice grade booster grades anyway. Um, and uh, if there's anything I don't go over in a video that you see on Waggle, then reach out to me, email, call, or text. Okay, the way Waggle works, it's progressive. So if you keep getting them wrong and you rush and you're not paying attention or you don't understand something and you just keep guessing, uh, the assignment will keep going on and on forever until you start getting it right. So you have to get um, questions from each of the topics that are covered correct in order to pass the waggle assignment. That's the way that it's structured, um, is that you pass once it, uh, the waggle feels that you understand the material. So. If you are struggling, you're spinning your wheels, and the assignment just keeps going, then please reach out to me so I can help you uh, figure out what uh, we need to go over so that you are successful, all right? So um, let's get started here. I'm going to approximate real numbers, uh, rational numbers, I'm sorry. And so let's recall, what are rational numbers? So rational numbers are any numbers that uh, numbers that uh, either terminate, there's two rules, they have to either terminate, which means that the decimal ends, or they repeat in a pattern, okay? Repeat in a pattern. And therefore, that means that it, if it is irrational, irrational, and um, so numbers that terminate or repeat in a pattern, or they can be written as, written as a fraction, A over B. Okay, let me, I can move myself out of the way here. Boop, there you go. And so that means that if it's irrational, it has to be one of two things. It has to be non-terminating, which means it never ends, and it has to be non-repeating, okay? And so some examples of these are going to be, the most famous one, of course, is pi. So if you type pi in, then you'll get 3.14159, dot, 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 so on forever, okay? It never ends. Um, and any square root that's not a perfect square is also an irrational number. So for example, the square root of two. Now it's gonna ask you to approximate the square root of two or the square root of any number or some irrational numbers. So all you have to do is come onto your calculator and find the square root of those values. So here I have 1.4 and I believe that it will ask you to round to the nearest tenth. So you take this third digit here, uh, one, and that's gonna round your four and I could put that here, 1.41. You take that one to round the four. It's important that you round correctly in order to get the answer correct, okay? So that's going to, remember, four below, it stays the same. Five or up, you're gonna round up. So this is gonna to round to 1.4, okay? So that's how you approximate um, irrational numbers. Let's scroll down a little bit and let's do two examples. All right, in this first example, which square root is approximated on each number line, okay? So let's look over here, the square root of six. You can use your calculator for all of these, okay? You should know by now, you guys are great with your calculator, so you know where the button is for this. So the square root of six is 2.4. Now notice that four is the third digit, so when I uh, round here, this is I take the four to round my other four to stay the same, so 2.4, all right? Uh, and I don't see that in either of these boxes, so let's move on to the next one. Let's find the square root of eight is 2.82. So 2.82, which is gonna take that two, round the eight to stay the same, 2.8. Do you see that on the number line? Yes, I do. So I would take this here, this square root of eight, and I believe that these are drag and drop, and you could drop it right here into this box, square root of eight. But now I'm still looking for 3.6. So the next one is the square root of 10. So come over to your calculator, find that value, 3.16. At 3.16, so you take the six and you, that rounds that one up to a two. So this is three and two tenths, which my value that I'm looking for is three and six tenths. So that means I've got one option left. Let's verify that it's going to be accurate. 3.60. So 3.60, that zero is gonna round the six to stay the same. And look at that, it matches. So now I can take this square root of 13 and drag it and drop it up here, the square root of 13. All right, so that's how you will locate the uh, values on a number line. 
All right, let's scroll on down. And last uh, topic here is we're going to compare rational numbers. Mrs. Zimmer wrote four inequalities on the board. Two of them are true. So let's figure out which one it is. Remember, whenever you're comparing numbers, the best thing you want to do is to convert them all to decimals. Convert to decimals. And then that way it, it can best compare them. Okay? So I have nine and three quarters. Well, you should know by now three quarters is 75 cents. So this is 9.75 on the right hand side. And I can use my calculator over here to find the square root of 85, which is going to be 9.2. 9.21. So what uh, symbol, it gave me a less than symbol. So is this true? Is 9.21 less than 9.75? And the answer is yes. You're comparing your place values, right? That both of the nines are the same. So then we have to move on to the second place value, 2. And 2 is less than 7. So this one here is true, OK? All right, let's move on to the next one. I have uh, 8 and 1 half, which we know is 50 cents, or 8.5, 8.50. And now let's find the square root of 66, 8.12. Is 8.12 greater than 8.50? No, so that's not true. 6 and 3 fourths, that's 6 and 3 quarters, which is 75 cents. Now I have the square root of 47 with my handy dandy calculator, 6.85. Is 6.85 greater than 6.75? Yes, it is. So I will highlight that. And just to be thorough, I'm going to go ahead and do the last one, 5 and 4 fifths, which you can, um, if you don't know them off the top of your head, remember that you're going to divide. That's how you will uh, come up with your decimals here. The whole number stays the same. 5 is the whole number. And to convert 4 fifths to a decimal, you divide 4 divided by 5, enter 0.8. So this is 5 and 8 tenths. And now the square root of 33 is 5.74. So is 5.74 greater than 5 and 8 tenths? No, it's not. So these two are not correct. And the two on the left are. Okay, so some of the times it will ask you, select all that apply. Usually that means that there's more than one is correct. Um, so again, upload your notes to the Google Classroom, complete the homework on Waggle, do not procrastinate. If you feel like the assignment's not ending and there's something you don't understand, please email, call, or text, okay? Do not wait till the last second to start this. And please ask for help. We're still here. We're still your teachers. We're here to help you. All right, have a good day. Bye.